Hello, and welcome to another story in the Stocktober special of the Heart of the Jackals. I'm your host, Lothran, showing you what's underneath the next layer of dirt and debris. So let's clear it off and examine what we've found. Grab yourself that snack you've been craving. Settle into your favorite spot. Get real nice and comfortable and listen closely to dust to dust. Roland crouched in his attic. They were dragging another victim to the square. The woman shouted and begged. She struggled and tore at the grips of her captors. Her outbursts of rage, her terrified howls, every last scrap of energy she spent trying to free herself, it meant nothing against their happy grins. Each of them stood in roughly the shape of a man, roughly head and shoulders and legs. But their skin seemed to move and dance like sand whipped up by the wind. Yet they walked slowly and carefully, and those smiles, bright gleaming grins, curving up their faces, bending across their heads in perpetuity, up beyond their small little eyes, Roland shivered reaching for his sword out of comfort. It would do him no good. He watched dozens try to hurt these things in a myriad of methods, but nothing, nothing seemed to phase or even slow them down. They tied her to the table they'd taken from a nearby home, smirking and grinding their fingers down into her flesh, securing her to the wood through some unseen and unknowable connection and watching while she struggled. They danced when she was glued to the wood, more and more of them snaking their blanks, faces around homes or main streams, save for their smiles, their winding, face-rending smiles. Roland wanted to look away. He wanted to run. He wanted to end his life right here. But he'd been through these thoughts a hundred times already, and he'd performed none of them as yet. The woman screamed in agony as one of the creatures, shoving back its fellows, raised up one hand and dove it into the flesh around her heart. Her shrieks of suffering and terror so loud that Roland could feel it peeling back the layers of his thoughts with each passing second. The monster went back, searching deep and dark in the woman. Something hidden, something remaining there. Roving with his arm up this way and past that obstacle, the woman's scream cut off like all the others. Her face contorted, starting to melt and shrink. The creature curled its tongue right out and threw its frozen, madness reeking smile in deep thought while it worked at hidden switches in the woman's body. It twisted its head back, miming a silent, riotous laugh. They never made a sound. All of these abominations crowding around the first performed the same action in unison, none of them making any sort of hint at a sound or a laugh or any emotion at all. Just those haunting, curving, curling smiles up around their heads. Then her entire body became like goop. Her features shifted and shrank. Melting and twisting as they collided with one another, all to collect and swirl across her naked skin, till her body was an undulating, near-formless lump of fat and muscle, bloated, bleeding, twisted, and foreign, still screaming, still in pain, and living through this torment, but unable to escape it. Slowly, the one performing the practice withdrew its hand, showing off a tiny face embedded into the woman's heart, complete with a mouth and teeth gasping for breath. They danced as one, a happy jaunting jig, each of them taking turns being the focus of the successful event. Then they slowed one at a time. Roland knew what was happening. He'd seen it so much before, so many times repeated over and over, and yet he'd done nothing. These things were finding another victim. As the last of them came to a stop, they would face their next target, and then one of them would come from that direction after a few minutes, another person struggling against a fate that could not be avoided. Oh no! No! No, no, no! 
Rowan snatched the sword, ready to plunge it into his heart, only to have it knocked from his grasp. A beautiful, perfectionate smile shoved into his face as intensely strong hands gripped him by the shoulders. No! No! He cut gouges into the wooden floor with his fingernails as he fought with all his might to reach the sword just a little bit further. He gave up as he grabbed its spare ceramic roof tile, smashing at the creature while it continued to smile so hauntingly and drag him down one of his own stairs. Feeling himself pulled ever closer to a fate much worse than death, being dragged from his house, the sound of the creatures feasting on the previous lump, and the sight of them springing gracefully through the air with triumphant exuberance at their victories. Roland bashed himself in the face with the tile, repeatedly smashing against his own skull, even after he cracked and split the tile, shoving sharp earthen knives into his face, spewing and spraying blood and torn bits of flesh, skin, and muscle till the fabric of his life spilled out of him and into the old cobblestone streets. The beast turned the moment he was dead. Looking down, the smile slowly wiped from its face, hanging its head in sullen silence. All the others of its horrible kind came to its side. They stared down at the tragedy that had befallen them, their bright, shiny smiles wiping themselves from their faces, the curves receding, the mouth separation forming back to a single solid face, two tiny little button eyes, nothing more. They looked at one each other. They crept en masse through the streets of the village, off into the bright sunlight warm day they had arrived within, the wind taken from their sails. And so it is that our time together has once more come to an end. I hope you've had as much fun as I have. As always, I've been your pleased host, Lothran, and this was Dust to dust, another tale straight from the heart of the jackals. And as I've taught you as best I can, I now lead you to an expert who can send you on your way like no other. Go ahead, little worm. Hello and good night to each and all. Leave your comments and kindness and questions down below. Like and share to help us learn, spread, and grow. And we encourage each and every one of you to do your absolute best to stay safe out there. Goodbye, everybody. Good night. Good luck. Bye-bye.